Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is May 20th of 2018. It's about uh, 9.45 a.m. Uh, just a few hours ago, we ordered from Amazon uh, Prime, what do they call it, where you get groceries delivered. So we've got... Uh, some coke and water uh, going to be delivered here between 10 and 12 and we can track it on our uh, computer of course we've been using them for a while uh, comes in handy for uh, although I I'll be ordering in uh, or ordered in coke zero and some water uh, a few ice cream bars. I'm diabetic type 2, of course. Um, made some changes. <laughs> Again, every time you, every time I make a video, I've made changes. I have my 4K LG monitor here in front of me. I've been using the 4K uh, a, bit, a little bit. You know, the 4K videos that I see on YouTube really look good. But, of course, those videos are made you know, by people who, you know, were doing 4K and really wanted to show it off. On uh, Netflix, the two or three 4K uh, movies that I saw, you know, I, I really wasn't impressed. I think I probably, you know, I, I think I think there are <clears throat> some 4K movies on Netflix that I could. Uh, you know, probably rave about, but I, I'm not, I, this is a brand new 4K monitor, by the way. Um, just not impressed with it. It's, um, and like I said, this is a new monitor. Next to it is my, let me see here. How do I get out of here? Here we are. Um, next to the monitor is a monitor that I've had a while, and it's an LG Ultra Wide, 25 inch, and I really like it. Like I said, it's ultra wide. Uh, I can put two full um, browser pages or whatever, you know, right next to each other. Uh, because I'm using two monitors, I can, like I have the control, and I can have other things over there too. Right now, this is the control for this uh, video that I'm making, the uh, copying of the screen and the audio. And uh, there you can see how long I've been talking and how big the file is and uh, whatever but because I have this other monitor I can just move it out of the way you don't have to see that uh, now this LG 4k also uses the screen control program okay it's buried there let's see here it is and that works with both of these monitors and down here, you can see this is the LG Ultra HD, so that's the 4K monitor. I can go to split screen here. Right now, I have this off, but I could uh, change. Uh, not showing you too much because I've got it covered up. But anyway, I have the, let's go back to here. I have all these options, and those options also apply over there on this other monitor. So I could have this divided up. I could have, you know, this picture here. I could have another picture down here or text, or I could have, it just gives me a lot of to work with, which is I haven't been doing it as much as I, you know, utilizing it as much as I should. Now, um, as you know, I've been using for quite a while 
you know, two USB cameras, both Logitech, and I can switch the input. This is a C930E, I believe, which is like the professional. Um, but compared to the 190, instead of the less than 100, compared to the 4K Logitech camera, it really does better. Of course, this is not a fair comparison because of the, you know, lighting. But uh, what I'm thinking about, and when you watch my videos, you see me, you know, switching back and forth. Maybe I'm, you know, going to hold something up and I'll hold it up and I switch to that. But, you know, I think what I may do is just go with this camera. Uh, the simpler it is, you know, the better for me. And I'm thinking I may just go with this camera. But I also, what I may do is go back again to the uh, hooking in my Panasonic uh, G7 camera and play with that. But number one, I think I may just eliminate disconnect for now. And if you follow my videos, you know, tomorrow I may change my mind. But uh, just eliminate this camera that's right up here on top of my monitor, my uh, 27 inch monitor, is it? The, no, yeah, I think it's 27, yeah. 4K, can't remember. I, I'll tell you what we can do, we can find out though. But I think I'm just going to stick with using this camera over here. I have it on a tripod, and um, the only thing better would be if I had a uh, motor there where I could move it around instead of having to reach over there and do it. But maybe I'll do something like that with the... Uh, Panasonic G7 and so um, I've moved things around in this room again things are a disaster you can get a little bit of the idea back here but it's a disaster that entire area because it's a small room uh, it's my bedroom slash office I have a bathroom and all my possessions are in this room. There's a Roku TV. I'm not going to, you've seen it before. Right over there. It's, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I keep hooking it up and then I keep saying to hell with it. Because I on my computer here I can look at, uh, I can watch Netflix, uh, Hulu, uh, you know, all that stuff right on the, right on the monitor here. And uh, the Roku's, with my eyesight, a little far for seeing type and stuff, you know, text. Um, I'm going to try something new. Well, let me go, stick with the subject, uh, subject of... Um, This is my LG 25-inch monitor that's going that I really like. Uh, the price has come down quite a bit from, I forget what I paid for it. I could look up on orders and it would pop up and it would tell me, but this is a good price now for this. Uh, if, you, if, if you're into that, you need to check and see if you want type that's, you know, that, that small, but it really helps with what I'm doing. I can have something over here and have my blog open and be posting, writing a blog entry and I can easily cut and paste. I can also, you know, I can be, have something here I want to cut and paste from on the other monitor. I can have something that I'm reading here that I want to uh, uh, plagiarize or <laughs> information from or whatever. But uh, 
this is a really nice monitor and that's what I have hooked up but um, I just ordered this 29 inch LG this is a 25 LG ultra wide and I just ordered this 29 inch ultra wide monitor and only $250 um, got good ratings uh, so far as I know good you know statistics or whatever uh, I measured in the past I forgot to uh, I should have done that <laughs> uh, so I think what I'm going to do is replace the 25 inch monitor ultra wide with this 29 inch uh, there's always a possibility what I might decide to do is keep the 25 inch and it just depends when I get it in and uh, set my new brand new 4k monitor on the floor I I don't know what I'm going to do um, you'll find out I guess when I find out I won't be getting it for I don't know seven to ten days so give me some time to think about uh, what I want to do oh I was looking for this looks nice you know oh my god did I make a mistake 32 inch monitor and display I don't know I'm not I, 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 I delete that <laughs> I don't want to look at that the other news for you I have decided to do a podcast I'm sort of doing a podcast now except it's a video podcast and I have several blogs that nobody goes to anymore at one time they were very popular and uh, nobody goes to them anymore because of Facebook I've decided to do a podcast and I decided on Podbin because I saw it recommended on uh, Twit I believe and I just you know paid the uh, they have three plans and I paid for the I think nine dollar a month plan or something and I'm paying month to month so I can I think I'm paying more because it was nine dollars I think if you paid for a year but uh, I didn't want to pay for a year because I might change my mind in you know shortly but so you know I don't have my own image up here yet and uh, this is uh, I haven't put filled this in yet I haven't done anything yet except sign up and pay also now if you want to start watching uh, I don't have anything there yet but it's go going to be uh, you know show me blog dot podbean.com now I have domain names a number of them that I'm not using I have some that I am using and what I'm thinking about I'm probably going to do and I haven't done it yet maybe I'll go in in the next few days and do it is probably the domain name that in order to get you here now you can use that you know you can use show me blog dot podbean bean.com um, but probably I'm going to use the domain showmeblog.com and right now I'm using that for a blog that nobody's going to and I think I'll just switch it over and use that but in case in a few days or whatever probably you ought to uh, use showmeblog.com podbean.com maybe today or tomorrow I'll make my um, first podcast 
So if I'm doing that, I may be switching from this headset, which has worked out really well for me for months or a year or two. And I may be going back to uh, one of the other microphones that I've uh, tried. And it'd be sort of a test trying them out again. Uh, two, what I'm thinking about doing is when I make these, some of these pod, I mean, if I make a podcast and for some reason it's, it's good, I may decide I'll take that audio and edit the audio with images instead of uh, doing what we're doing now. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have the audio and then I'll go and take the time to whatever I'm talking about. If I'm talking about when I worked at uh, St. Joseph Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri in 1972, I'll go find an image of the hospital in 1972 and edit, you know, so I'll use the audio, maybe. I may be doing that and that would, I'd put that on, on YouTube. Now, by the way, um, if I pay more, let's see, what is, go back, let's see if I can go here. Uh, support, uh, podcast, uh, browse podcast, where is, where is the information on the cost? Well, anyway, it's more. I think it's like $30 a month. You can do podcast and video here. So the stuff you're seeing on YouTube could be here. And I think I have the ability to Come on, support. Okay, maybe this is it. Uh, okay, advertising, uploading, how to upload, settings. Oh, wow, they have a bunch of uh, premium. They have a bunch. I don't. I didn't even see this the other. I haven't seen this the other day. So. Um, I could, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I'm actually playing with it is what I'm, uh, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do. That's what I always do. That's what I've been doing since uh, since 1982, when I started a blog in 1982. And it was, the entire time it was been, people complained because they liked the format the way the bulletin board was set up and then <laughs> they would get used to it and I would buy new, my first BBS program I wrote myself. And then I got others programs and I would use them. I ended up, Wildcat was the last one that I purchased and used and I loved that. But then oh, the World Wide Web was created so Howard's notebook moved to the World Wide Web. I, I really love that Wildcat software. That was really, for me, it was fun to play with because, you know, you, you set up your menus, you set up the, well, everything. And it was just, it was just great. The first BBS program that I, well, I, what I wrote for my, I had to, uh, wrote that in basic and I didn't know basic. I just had a, local guy in Kansas City who uh, wrote BBS software for the Radio Shack Model 1, but he wrote it, of course, for people who had not hard drives, but floppy drives. I didn't have, I couldn't afford a floppy. A floppy drive was, for the Radio Shack Model 1, was $350. That was for a floppy drive. Uh, I don't think I got any floppy drives around here. 
Um, and then, and I think those are 360K. Maybe that, no, that for the Radio Shack Model 1, they'd have been 360K floppy drives. Uh, but in order to do that with my Radio Shack Model 1, I had would have to have an interface box that Radio Shack sold. It was $350 for the interface box. That was just the box that when you had that, you could put a little more memory into it uh, and you could hook a floppy drive up to it. That would have been uh, seven, let's see, $700 just to be able to add one floppy drive to my, as I, I was using the, oh, the cassette recorder that Radio Shack sold with their, or you got it with your Radio Shack Model 1. And, uh, but I upgraded it to something called an Ektron Stringy Floppy little device. It was kind of like very small cassette tapes and they were on an endless loop and I had like four of these Ekron springy floppy. To, but anyway, um, that was fun to play with because it was pretty fast because much faster and better than the tape recorder. Because you could send it, you could decide where you wanted to send data. I had four of them, you know, so I could decide where I, or, or when I wanted to recall something by putting the code in there. I could pull the data. It was fun to play with. But uh, then later I, you know, ended up purchasing some software. Well, the next, I wrote my own BBS in, well, there again, I wrote it in basic and I didn't know, or either way, this guy who had 480 headquarters, he wrote this uh, BBS software if you had a floppy drive and a Radio Shack computer. And uh, he was local, which was neat because in those days it cost a lot of money to make a long distance phone call and especially to make a long distance phone call, you know, in, in your own state here in the United States. It I lived in Missouri. It cost me more money to call long distance in Missouri than it did to call long distance to New York City or to California. But it still costs a lot of money for long distance calls. And, uh, but anyway, so he was local, so I would check into his system all the time. And uh, then he got me into a conversation and I said, oh, by the way, I've, I've got a modem and it says it does AA, I, w what's that? And he says, that's auto answer. And I said, oh, uh, what can I do with that? Because I want to use, every, you know. And he said, oh. He said, well, do you want to do a BBS program? Uh, and I was like, uh, well, I don't know. And he says, well, if you want to do a BBS program, what you have to do is you, know, you peek into memory at, you know, 176554, and then you have to uh, poke to memory at 2600, 400, or, you know, whatever the, these numbers were. And I said, uh, peek, poke, I, what's that? And he said, he says, well, okay, how many floppy drives do you have on your, I, said, I don't have any floppy drives on my, I can't afford them. And he said, uh, oh my God, he said, you know, you don't have any hardware and you don't know anything, you're stupid. And he said, you can't, you can't have a BBS. You, you won't be able to have a BBS because you're too, too damn stupid and you don't have the hardware. And I said, uh, okay, thank you. I'm so nice. <laughs> and then I got out the basic book that I think came with, maybe with the, or maybe I purchased it separately from Radio Shack. And then I flipped in the pages, okay. Okay, I think if I, and I wrote a little bit of code, you know, had to keep trying, you know. And okay, and I got it to answer the, pick up the phone. And then I, you know, okay, I think before the day was over, I got it to, pick up the phone and would pop up on the screen and would say, welcome to Howard's notebook. And then the next day I go and I just flip through the book, you know, input. Oh, okay. Oh, so then I could, then I had to pop up, enter your name and just kept, you know, kept doing that. And then I, enjoy, then I finally wrote a BBS program. Uh, not great, but it, it worked, you know, and I, I liked it, but I had a guy call in 
remember back then too, uh, there was a story going around always at the phone company that you wanted to keep it a secret that you had a modem. If the phone company found out that you had a modem, they would charge you business rates. And I'm not sure that was actually ever true, although I'm sure the phone company probably thought about it. Um, so anyway, somebody logs in, and I forget the name that Tom used, but this guy logged in, and uh, this would be back about 1982. And he said, uh, went into chat. I had a chat set up there. And he said, uh, oh, um, what kind of computer are you using? I said, it's a Radio Shack Model 1. Oh, okay. And he says, well, I really like the Radio Shack Coco computer, the color computer. And he says, I work someplace and I've actually taken them and uh, uh, written code so they do stuff in the, you know, the, in the manufacturing plant or whatever it was to actually do things, these little color Radio Shack computers. And everything, oh, okay. And uh, he said, uh, oh, you're okay. You're using the Radio Shack Model 1. Uh, what kind of, uh, how many floppy drives do you have? I said, oh, I don't have any floppy drives. I can't afford that. I said, uh, so he says, oh, you're using the tape recorder. And I said, oh, no, not now. I, I said, I got something you never heard of. It's called a Necron Stringy Floppy. I actually have four of them. And he said, oh, yeah, I've heard of those. And I said, oh, okay. And uh, he said, well, what operating system are you using to control those Ektron stringy floppies? And I had the, the manual, you know, there. And I said, uh, it's Ektron stringy operating system. And he says, yeah. He says, uh, I wrote that. And I uh, looked at the thing and I said, no, you didn't. Uh, a guy by the name of Tom Wheeler wrote, wrote that. And he says, I'm Tom Wheeler. And he says, do you believe me? And actually, I did believe him when he said, because then I knew, I was remembering, you know, everybody's using a fit. Not me. I didn't ever, because I would just, uh, back in the days when everybody had CB radios, and I had a CB radio, and I used my, my call sign, you know, the FCC call sign that it was issued, like everybody else was supposed to use. Nobody else was, you know. But uh, anyway, so yeah, I believe you. And he says, well, he says, uh, well, type this on the screen, CMD slash, and I forget what it was. And I said, okay. And the screen filled with his name, you know, Tom Wheeler, Tom, 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 Tom. So anyway, he said, uh, it's only we talked a while, and he was a graduate of uh, KU, Kansas State University and had a degree in electrical engineering. And he says, I really don't understand, you know, bulletin board systems and this, this, uh, whatever. And he said, so anyway, I said, well, I, you know, I wrote the, I wrote a BBS program in basic. I'm, and uh, he said, uh, and he was local. And he said, uh, could, I come, could I come over and see your setup and everything? I said, sure, come on over. So he came on over. And he looked at everything, and I popped the code up on the screen, you know, the everything. And he said, I'd like to try to write a BBS program for you. And I said, well, that man, that'd be great. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, you know. And uh, uh, he said, I'm not sure if he said or if I, if I, I said, I'll print out for you the uh, my code for my BBS, for the, the thing in basic, and give it to you. And I printed it out. And gave it to him, and it was, I think, maybe the next day or uh, maybe two days later, he called me up and said, Hey, Jim, can I come over? Got your BBS program. And I said, Yeah. So he came in over, and we loaded it up, and wow. I mean, you know, I had no idea, you know, it, I was happy that I was able to do it, and I enjoyed doing it, and it was fun to play with and whatever. But then that was like in 1982, and I decided, uh, I'm going to buy software, you know, BBS software, well, all software. I'm going to buy it from people that know what they're, you know, what they're doing because I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, then he went on to write a uh, terminal program. And then when I switched 
from Radio Shack Model 1 to uh, Commodore 64. He changed his, uh, that program he'd written for me, the BBS program, he changed it so it would work on a Commodore 64. And I think he, and then he did some other stuff. He's still, I haven't talked to him in, oh my God, I don't know, 30 or 40 years or something. I don't know, a long time. I, I'm an amateur radio operator. He's an amateur radio, he was an amateur radio operator before I was. Uh, he taught at uh, college, taught electronic, you know, computers, or well, computer and electronics in college. Um, just recently, I was, uh, I got myself a, uh, digital ham radio DMR one and uh, in order to load it with uh, people with their ID numbers and so so when it pops on digital radio it, po it pops up and uh, knows automatically and will show you on the screen who you're talking to without them having to tell you in their call sign or whatever. He wrote the program that everybody uses to put those that information, that data into ham radios, but I haven't talked to him in years. But that uh, that was fun playing with uh, basic and learning it a little bit. Still, I didn't know it well. And one of the things that was sort of like a crossword puzzle or a thing there was, I just wanted people to use. I understood why people didn't want to use their, their real name because they were afraid the phone company was going to. But I just wanted them to use a name. You know, they got to use Jack Frost or John Smith or whatever. But uh, I didn't want them using something like Harry Hacker or something like that. And there was, I think it was Harry Hacker, some young guy, you know, and logged in. And I, I had a thing on there that said, you know, just use your real name. So anyway, I, uh, I said, posted the thing, you know, Harry Hacker's not allowed. Uh, and so I changed the code where if you put in Harry Hacker, you know, I took him out of the database and I put in there, if you used Harry Hacker, uh, you know, what what just wouldn't allow you to enter that uh, as a member, you know. So then the next, well, a few hours later, probably there's Harry Hacker. Okay. Now, I put in, you know, do a search string for, you know, Harry Hacker. If search string finds, then, you know, whatever. Can't remember basic now. Never knew it that well. And um, I um, so I looked at it, and then I saw, oh, okay. He put a space in front of the H for Harry. Okay, so I looked in my basic book. Oh, okay, do a search for if there's anything other than an alpha, you know, letter, then, you know. And so then I, uh, the next day he's logged in again as Harry Hack. I look, okay, and I see what he did. So I kept, it was kind of fun. I just kept, until I got it fixed where he, well, about that time though, um, is when Tom Wheeler, well, anyway, I, was, I, I had solved the problem, although Harry Hacker, who I found out, who I, I'm not sure if I actually met him later on, he actually went to work, he went to the United States Navy and ended up uh, uh, assigned to a nuclear submarine. But uh, then when uh, Tom Wheeler wrote this VBS program for me and uh, he put all kinds of things in there and so, number the first thing that happened, uh, nobody could, I already, you know, I had, I forget, 255 or something like that members, and then nobody else could register. So I told him, and he said, no, no, it's, I said, no, they, you can't, you know, I have 255 members, I can't, you know, and he said, no, it, 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 you're wrong. <clears throat> I wrote, you know, I, <clears throat> he said, I wrote that, I know what, I know how to write code or whatever. I said, okay. So then I looked at his code and then I, I, go, I didn't understand any, you know, 80% of it. And then I saw 
string in parenthesis 255 or something. And then I could kind of tell him, so I called him up and I said, okay, this line here. And he said, oh, yeah. He says, I didn't anticipate anybody getting more than 255. So he says, just change the number, you know, to 500 or 1,000 or whatever you want to do. I took care of that. And then um, the next thing, I, later on, you know, some guy says, uh, 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 I can't, it, your system won't let me log in with my name. And uh, I remember his name, by the way, yeah, I know. Uh, I can't log in with my name. And I said, well, it should work. And uh, he said, it doesn't work. And I said, well, hang on here a second. So I tried logging in, and it wouldn't let me in either. And so, okay, okay, what's wrong with this? What, and I uh, forget what his first name, but his last name was Hancock. And uh, so anyway, I called up Tom Wheeler, and I, Tom Wheeler said, no, no, I, I, I put, uh, uh, that's, that's, you're wrong, you're mistaken, no, uh, I, you know, and I said, uh, and I said, uh, you know, the, I told him the guy's name, you know, let's say John Hancock, and he said, no, no, and I said, uh, is there code in there doing a search for, you know, bad words and and he and, a, and he goes oh oh okay yeah he says i have, have it searched this right the way i had it searching for harry um hat or for hacker or whatever he said oh okay i'll change that so he had to go through and change the uh, routine but that was a lot of fun so i guess um 37 minutes we've been talking or I've been talking. I, you know, I could, I did show a few things, but I could strip the audio from this, and this could, I think I will. This will be, I'll take the audio out of this. I'll upload this to YouTube. I'll take the audio out of this, and this will be my first podcast on whatever I said, uh, let me escape this big picture of me. Whoa, no, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go to, okay. Um, what did I want to do? Um, uh, can't remember what was I going to, uh, Was I going to tell you? Let's see. Forgot. Uh, if you're listening to this as a podcast, and if you're not a follower on YouTube, if you follow me on YouTube, it's, by the way, youtube.com slash HNBBS. Uh but I think what I'm going to do is post this to, I know I'm going to post this to YouTube. Then I'm going to take the audio from this. And this is going to be my first podcast. And then I'm going to decide for the second podcast if I'm going to continue to use the same microphone and what else is going to be, uh, going to be changed. If you have any recommendations, uh, let me know because I'm not really not really good at audio. Maybe I should be running this audio. Maybe my audio should run into a sound card or some other device to enhance it in some way for for a podcast. Maybe the audio should be improved some way for a podcast. So anyway, I thank you very much for watching this on YouTube, and if you're decided to listen to it as a podcast, please, and I don't even know yet for this uh, podbean.com, and for right now it's, I'm at uh, showmeblog.podbean.com, and eventually I think it's going to be, my podcast will be at 
showmeblog.com. But I'll have to work on that, go in and change the uh, records and what have you. So whichever, if you're, especially if you're uh, listening to the podcast, please let me know what you uh, think. Uh, please leave a comment uh, or whatever else. And I'm not familiar with what else there is, but that's why good idea to get a podcast uploaded. It's uh, almost 1030. I better get off of here and wait for the Amazon delivery of uh, 25, I think it's 20 bottles of Coke Zero and some water and actually some, and keep in mind I'm a type 2 diabetic, some delicious uh, ice cream. Ah, willpower. Willpower, willpower, wherefore art thou? Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening.